Hi everyone, my name's Zoe and I'm the Storybus Librarian for Leeds Libraries and I'm here today with Dr Fiona Barker to talk about her amazing third book, Setsuko and the Song of the Sea as part of Leeds Lit Fest 2022. Hi Fiona. Hi, I'm very excited to be involved in Leeds Lit Fest. Brilliant and we're so excited to have you. So uh, what we're going to do today is Fiona's going to read to us from Setsuko and the Song of the Sea and then we're going to make a lovely craft. We're going to discuss all the ways that we can be more environmentally conscious and then we'll say goodbye. So Setsuko and the Song of the Sea, written by me, Fiona Barker, and illustrated by Howard Gray, who's not here with me today. He's drawn a picture of himself so that you can see what he looks like. So that, that's what Howard looks like. Um, so just so that you can see it took two people to make this book and Howard's illustrations are absolutely amazing, as you're going to see. Setsuko loved the sea. She swam its shallows. She dived its depths. So much detail in these pictures. One day, when she was swimming far from shore, a shadow filled the sea. The beat of Setsuko's heart rippled through the water around her. It was an enormous whale. Don't be scared, he said. I'm just looking for my friends. I'm so small and the ocean is so big. Sometimes I wonder if I am the last whale. It's hard to imagine something so big feeling small, but Setsuko understood. My friends have chosen a life on land. You might feel small, but I can see you have a big heart, she said. Stay here and rest with me. I'd love to play with you. For a week, Setsuko and the whale shared the sea. He showed her how to make rainbows from sea spray. She told him stories about the fish that used to play hide and seek with her in the seaweed forest and how her friends used to come and share the cold excitement of the sea and dive with her. Lots to see in that picture too. <laughs> they played together from the first crisp light of morning until the setting of the evening sun. Towards the end of the week, when he thought she wasn't looking, Setsuko noticed the whale looking out into deeper waters. It's time for you to carry on your search for your friends. The ocean is deep and I have heard tales of places safe enough to hide many little secrets like you, winked Setsuko. Swim east, my friend, and I know you will find what you're looking for. The whale smiled. Thank you. You have given me hope, a great gift. Let me give you something in return. And he began to sing. The song filled the sea. The song filled Setsuko. It came to her through the water. She was in the song and the song was in her. It was the saddest, most beautiful thing she had ever heard. The whale turned to swim towards the rising sun and disappeared into the depths. He had left, but the song remained. And Howard's drawn a brilliant fluke here of a whale. They're all different. It's like the fingerprints of the whale, and you can tell whales apart by looking at their fluke and the pattern on them. Setsuko took the song and made it her own. Everyone who heard Setsuko's song was filled with the wonder of the ocean. They remembered the beauty 
and mystery of the sea. With a song in their hearts, they asked Setsuko what they must do. Setsuko loved the sea. She swam its shallows. She dived its depths. Sometimes, just sometimes, Setsuko thought she heard the song of the whale once again. But when she listened carefully, there were many voices, all sending their sweet sound across the swell of the sea. The end. Brilliant, thank you so much. Um, so what we love to do at Leeds Libraries is whenever I read a story, I love to have a song to go with it. And what I would normally do with something like Setsuko is I would just pick any old ocean themed song like Baby Shark or One, Two, Three, Four, Five. But I understand that you have a special song. That there is a really song. <laughs> there is, I, like, I like a bit of a sing song. So there is a song to go with Setsuko and you might know the tune. So it's quite easy to join in. There are a few actions as well, so I'll, I'll sing it for you. I'm not a singer, so forgive my voice. <laughs> it goes like this. Setsuko went to see, 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 to see what she could see, see, see. But all that she could see, see, see was plastic at the bottom of the deep blue sea. Please sing this song with me, 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 and tidy up the sea, 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 so all that you can see, 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 is beauty at the bottom of the deep blue sea. I love it. <laughs> I hope that everyone at home, listen, just keep re-watching that bit, learn that song, and let's all sing it together wherever we see each other. I know I'm going to be singing it on the story bus. Amazing. Okay, so you've given us a story. You've given us a song. Could there possibly be more? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, am I right in thinking that you have a little craft activity that families at home could do to go along with the book? Indeed. <laughs> I've got a couple of ideas for you this afternoon, two different ones. And they're both using things that you probably have at home. Um, the first one is using a cardboard tube. And I'm going to show you very quickly how you can turn that into an octopus. You will need some scissors, a cardboard tube and some crayons. So a toilet roll works really nicely for this, but I've only got a kitchen roll today. So I'm going to cut it to the length the toilet roll like that and then all you need to do to make the octopus is to cut eight legs about halfway up the tube just cut round that's one two three four five six seven eight and then you just turn his legs up all the way round and then you can colour him in so crayons work really well paint works really well and then I've got some sticky eyes I don't like to use googly eyes plastic ones because they won't degrade they'll last forever so I just use plastic sticky eyes and you can stick them on your octopus once you've coloured him in and there you go a cardboard yeah. tube octopus, very quick. You can colour yours in and make it much more exciting than mine. And the second thing I've got to show you uses one of these. This is a bread bag that I found in my kitchen. And I'm going to turn this into an, a jellyfish. So the first thing to do is to make the body of the jellyfish. And so you want to blow into your bag you've got some air in the end, in the closed end, and then some sellotape or a piece of string, just 
tie that round, just put that down while I tie it round. That's the body of your jellyfish. And then to make his legs, you'll just need your scissors again. And you just cut up the jellyfish. You can just cut the bottoms. And then what's quite fun to do is to tear the rest. So once you've got a slight cut, you can tear them open. And it doesn't matter whether they're thick or thin or how many you do, but you want lots of strands at the bottom of your octopus like that. <laughs> jellyfish not octopus um at the bottom of your jellyfish and then you can hang that up and if you haven't got a clear bag like that it doesn't matter if you want to use one with colors on because jellyfish come in all sorts of different colors so it doesn't matter if your bag is colored either and that's it brilliant i can't wait to see all of the awesome ocean themed recycled crafts that everyone is going to be doing all over Leeds. So that's really great. I can't wait to try them out as well myself. Um, and that's something else that I wanted to talk about actually was that this book has this brilliant sort of sustainability theme. Um, and I know that you're a really environmentally conscious person yourself. So do you have any tips for any families watching on what they could do to do their little bit to be more mm. environmentally friendly? Well, I've got lots of ideas. Um, so the, the environmental message in Setsuko is all in the pictures. So um, if you have a look at the pictures in Setsuko, you'll see some of the things that I'm concerned about. So on the first page, there's lots of things that don't belong in the ocean drawn in the pictures as well. And so one of the first things you can do is get yourself one of these. This is my litter picker. I've got a nice folding one so that I can carry it anywhere. And so the first thing you can do is to look for litter and pick it up. Of course, never drop it in the first place. That's much better. Um, but it's really good to pick up litter, even though you might live somewhere like Leeds, which isn't near the coast. <laughs> so you don't live near the ocean in Leeds, but it's still really good to pick up litter because the litter that gets dropped in your street the next time it rains, it can be washed into the drains and the drains lead to rivers and the rivers lead to the sea. And so the litter that you pick up in Leeds won't ever make it to the ocean. And that's really, really important. So that would be my first tip. My second tip is to look around your house. Do a bit of a check as to where you're using plastic in your house. So you could look in your bathroom and have a look at all the things that are packaged in plastic in your bathroom, like shampoo, hand soap, uh, toothpaste, um, all the things that you can find in your bathroom that are packaged in plastic and do a bit of research on the internet and see if there's an alternative thing that you could use that isn't packaged in plastic. So in lots of supermarkets now, for example, you can buy shampoo that's in a bar like soap and you can buy that and that's either no packaging at all just the bar or it's in a cardboard package and that can be really easily recycled so have a look and see if you can find some alternatives the other thing that i've done to look at plastic in my house is i have a jar in my kitchen and sometimes i put in that jar any plastic that i use so, so that at the end of a week, say, I can look and see how much plastic I've used and where it's come from. And then again, I can think about, oh, could I swap that out and use something else instead? So those would be my top tips for starting to think about the plastic that you're using and the plastic that's around you and how you can reduce that. Brilliant. Um, I'd like to add one top tip for being more environmentally friendly, which is, of course, use your library because every book that you borrow from a library is going to get reused by loads and loads and loads of other children all over Leeds. So you know that you're getting that reuse part of the reduce, reuse, recycle. Very good. Brilliant. Wow. Thank you so much for talking to us today, Fiona. It's been really great. Um, anyone watching, you can find copies of Dr. Fiona Barker's book, Butsuko and the Song of the Sea, in your local library. 
you can reserve it online using our catalogue. If you make any of the crafts, look me up on Twitter. I'd love to see pictures. Brilliant. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.